everyone. I want to thank you all for tuning in to Young Wildlife Photographer Photo Chat. It's your hosts, Martin and Alex. Uh, I'm going to skip the whole introductions because you got introduced to us on the Instagram and in the last oh, last episode, which was our first. Um, if you're not here from Instagram, I don't know how you got here, but hi. <laughs> How's it going? Um, so today we're going to be uh, interviewing Cooper Daniels. He is based in Texas. He's 15 years old. He's been shooting for a year or so, would you say? Yeah, Something yeah, like that, right, roughly? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, and he's a really awesome photographer. Um, so I'm just going to get into the questions and we'll just start asking away and then we'll just cover some photos. So how's it going recently? Like what have you been doing? You know, what have you been trying to shoot? All that stuff. Uh, so nothing, nothing has like a project or anything. Uh, there's, there has been this yellow bellied sap sucker. I know oh, nice. that's, that's awesome. there's this tree that it goes to constantly. Yeah. I know that's common for most of most of y'all and a lot of people in america oh i wish bro i, I haven't gotten that really? many of them. yeah during yeah. migration we get a few but other than that not many yeah i saw my first one and y'all may be laughing at that but i saw my first one over thanksgiving and then all and i came back from that was when i during an illinois trip when i went up just to visit some family and i saw my first ever yellow bellied sap sucker and then i came home and i saw one the next day after getting getting back here uh back to texas but uh, so yeah, there's I found a spot where he goes all the time. So I've been trying to kind of not ta- kind of tame him, get him used, get him, at least get close enough. Get to some close it. shots of it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, and I've been seeing on that same tree, you've been getting nice backlit shots with yeah. uh, ruby crown kinglets and yellow rumped warblers. Yeah, so about that. Warblers. yeah. Hopefully we get to cover yeah, some. Of those one tree. Those are one awesome. tree. Nice. Yeah. That's Do awesome. you know anything uh, in particular about that tree that they like? Not really. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know that one. I don't. Tree in a tree. There's just a tree. Just like a tree. Hey. I mean, hey. they might just like it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the ruby crown kinglet only comes back like as the sun's at the horizon, right? Like yeah. rise is going down. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think uh, Martin actually glitched yeah, Martin, out there. So. Martin's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take it from here. I think my oh, you know. <laughs> Something about yellow-bellied sap suckers is that what they actually like to do is drill holes in trees, yeah. let it fill up with sap, and then when a bug gets stuck in the sap, um, they eat the bug that was in the sap. Oh yeah. So my so my biggest guess is that it's is that it's a very sappy tree, and the ruby crown kinglet and the yellow belly uh, yellow rumped warbler are actually coming and eating the bugs that the um, yellow-bellied sap sucker trapped in the tree, and you'll see lines and rows of yeah did you guys uh, did my internet go out for a second back there yeah <laughs> okay because you guys everyone just disappeared into a void of blackness and i was like hello can you hear me all right so um alex you want to take the next question sure so what like got you in photography in particular oh oh that's always been a hard one for me uh, i don't know to be honest uh I remember I went outside one Sunday afternoon, got, came home from church, just bored, didn't really have anything to do. So I took my phone outside to start taking pictures of some uh, butterflies, you know? Uh, nice, yeah. I was, ha- I was happy with what I got, and I was like, all right, maybe I can invest in a camera. And then I think it was about a year after that, I got a camera. Didn't really shoot butterflies after that. Just <laughs> looked for bird. Yeah. Uh, we covered a butterfly in the last, actually, last episode with the, uh, Eli. Yeah. He had a nice was there a- tail. Yeah. Was there a particular moment where you're like, damn, I wish I had a camera for that? No. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there was a tiger swallowtail. and It wouldn't land. This thing was massive. Mm-hmm. Like, it was, I've, I'd never seen one this this big. Still haven't. I've seen tiger swallowtails in the past, but they just weren't this big. Yeah. But it wouldn't sit and stop. So all the photos I have, they're all blurry. And so, because uh, it, it would just flap and it would kind of like sit there for a second, but it would flap its wings super fast as it was sitting on these flowers. Yeah, uh, on these idiots, and uh, so I was like, I wonder if I wish I had a camera because you've seen pictures of uh, hummingbirds, right? You'll see them frozen. That, yeah, that's hard. With that was like, yeah, for yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much what got me started. And I slowly nice. just upgraded gear and moved that's to That's awesome. Burn. That's great. So I don't know if you're like more of like a birder type, but I know you do a lot of like bird photography. Yeah. So what was your spark per uh, spark bird per se, or like spark animal in general? Like what really got you into it? Definitely hummingbirds. Hummingbirds. Uh, nice. Yeah, we'd have we'd have them all over the backyard, and I always thought it was kind of just like a 
a miracle if you could capture one with it's like just yeah. frozen in flight. Uh, yeah. Now I know more. It's possible, but uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely just trying to capture one. If I'm not mistaken, down in Texas, don't you guys have like all the hummingbirds? You have like a ton of species. There are a ton uh, around me. We only get two ruby throated humming. Yeah, ruby throated hummingbirds and black chin hummingbirds. Yeah, uh, yeah, those are the two that. That would get I, I, I think me and Alex are sharing ruby throated. That's all we've yeah. got. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's been a few actually in the winter, Rufus and Black Chinned coming up, which is just like crazy. But um yeah. they've they make it through December, but in January they normally Yeah. 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 But that's cool we, we uh there's actually an Anna's yeah, an Anna's and a Rufus hummingbird, both males. There's one of each at a feeder that I know an hour and a half north of me. So I said, yeah. I'd already, I'd put my hummingbird feeders away like early November. As soon as I heard about these hummingbirds, uh, early, like late December, threw them back out, hoping that they would come north or uh, come south, hoping yeah. Uh, yeah. they might be migrating. But uh, I found out that they actually stay there and they'll just go back north as, as south as they'll get. But I'll leave my nice. hummingbirds yeah. out now, or my hummingbird awesome. feeders all winter now. Nice. All right, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like if you could travel anywhere, where would you go and why? Let's say my budget wasn't a problem. Just yeah, anything. budget wasn't a problem. Anywhere <laughs> in the whole world, the sky's the limit. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't leave Texas. I go, I go to South Texas. That that for a travel, just a trip, right? Just a trip. Just a trip. I'd go. I'd spend a month in South Texas. I would Seriously? do it. Seriously? Awesome. You, you, like, wait, wait, wait. Give me. you could go to Costa Rica. You could go I'd to go Alaska. You go to Florida. You could go Africa? to uh, California. Oh, I'm Africa. actually hoping to go to Florida this summer. Nice, yeah. Yeah, so. I want to get out there for uh, burrow wings. I haven't gotten burrow wings in Florida uh, anywhere yet. I need to get. I want to go for shorebirds. Hey, I want to go I've to the seen, coast. I've seen yeah. three owls in my life. Fifteen years. I've only had three different three owl experiments experiences. What have you seen? Or were they all the same I've, species? I've seen. Uh, Two great horned owls in two different trees in November. Uh, for Thanksgiving, I saw a pair of great horned owls. No pictures. Nice. It was like one in the morning. Uh, yeah. And then I've seen great horned owl like five, six years. And then yeah, each yeah. screech owl about three, three years ago. So I just owls got a, are not, uh, not good for me. <laughs> I just got a great horn today. My first one in seven months. It was super skittish. It was. It wanted nothing to do with me. So yeah, but At why? Like, them commonly, commonly. Is it, you said East Texas or Florida. Was it East Texas or West South Texas? Texas. Oh, South Texas. South Texas. <laughs> Close enough. Rio Grande. Um, South. So what's like super appealing about South Texas to you? Vermilion flycatchers, spoonbills, oh, yeah. uh, no green jays. Uh, I, I honestly don't know how to pronounce it. I'll probably be made fun of the plain chocolate. Perluxia? Like that. No, the Perluxia I do want to see, though. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all humming, any hummingbirds down there. The great Kiskadee was one. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, lots, of, lots of species on it. Uh, Tailed flycatcher, am I think about the right thing? Oh yeah, yeah. Those, yeah. Uh, we, get, we get hundreds, thousands of them. Uh, they all congregate. At least in Dallas, I've seen wow. hundreds of thousands of them. But they'll congregate in thousands of them, uh, groups of them. I remember one time there was a. Uh, I was at my sister's softball tournament. There's this tree just full of them. Now, I didn't even know I they did so that. Sad. Yeah, wow. Just, and like, <laughs> all right. So I know that recently you went to Illinois to see your family and you posted some photos there. What was your favorite bird that you saw up north? Oh. Because I also know you got a few lifers up there. Oh, yeah. Uh, I saw creeper, brown creeper for the first time, golden crown kinglet for the first time. I think the brown creeper might be my favorite. Brown creepers are uh, cool. Were, yeah, the brown creepers were, were awesome. Cool. When you when you get a really good look at them, which is pretty hard actually. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. they go from the bottom of a tree and they creep up the base and fly to another tree. And something really interesting about them actually is they are insectivores and yeah. they come and they still stay pretty north. So if you think you don't have insects and you live in the Midwest, you do have insects in the winter. <laughs> And just today, yeah. I went outside and saw an insect flying with snow around it. So. Oh, that's whack. 
<laughs> I wish I I wish I had more snow. The um wait, uh what were your thoughts on the uh golden crown? Did you like it? They're prettier than the ruby crown. Thank uh, you. Yeah, that's I've what never, I'm saying, bro. I love did, that. How did you get any it. photos of them? Actually, I have photos. So in one day, now this may be normal for y'all, but definitely not normal for me. But uh, I saw Ruby Crown and Golden Crown in the uh, same area, the same day, a few minutes apart. Uh, so I got I got photos of both of them. That's I've awesome. I've never seen a, ma- a male Ruby Crown. All of them have been females. So I, uh, I can't really compare them. But I've, I saw a male uh, Golden Crown. Nice. And no, I've never seen a male, fe- um, male Golden Crown. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yeah. You know, um, up here along the lake shore, during a really good push of migration where a lot of a lot of them are coming in, you'll see literally hundreds of golden ruby crown kinglets twiddling around all by you. And you know, it's just like just tons of them. So that's yeah. awesome. So Cooper, I think we know the answer to this, but why don't you tell the viewers what's your favorite like technique, right? So looking at backlit or silhouette or drone or whatever. Oh. And we know what this is. Why don't you tell the viewers a little yeah, bit about that? Definitely backlit. I I've been trying to do backlit, like portraits or back, like not necessarily silhouettes. Silhouettes are fun, and they're cool. But trying to get the backlit portrait where you still can see the colors and you got detail, that's 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 pretty fun. That nice. that's, that's probably be my favorite. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, I know you have some really nice downy woodpecker shots. So what is it particularly that you like so much about the downy woodpecker? I like woodpeckers in general, so mm-hmm. that's what, I think that's why I love this that sapsucker so much. It's just, yeah, I, I love woodpeckers. But uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. You ever got affiliated before? I've seen them. I have one photo, which is now lost for forever. Oof. I have no clue what happened to it. But uh, it was with one of those. Uh, I went camping in Arkansas two, two, three years ago, and I saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, pileated and i uh it was one of those lummox that's like got the built-in lens and it's like uh it has this little like so the camera's here and it, you had to like push this little knob forward to yeah. zoom it in and i had a picture it was clear it was decent uh it was harsh lighting of course but uh it's all right only time only time i've ever seen one and only time well if about. you you can go searching for them they're really large woodpeckers and make great great photos yeah. For anyone who doesn't know that's watching this, they're the ones that you see in cartoons with the big red uh, crest on the back of their head and the big bill. I've never gotten a good shot, but I was walking home from school the other day. It was about two months ago. I always see the interesting birds just walking home from school. I had two of them, <laughs> like a quarter mile apart, eight feet off the ground. I just did not care. I was there. And I didn't have my camera with me. Just like right in front of me, just just sitting there. I was like, bro. You know, uh, uh, here particularly, pileateds really aren't that rare. And my grandma lives... Um, kind of surrounded by the woods she gets a pileated coming to a stump all the time she sees the pileated all the time it's like never have my camera i bring my camera mm-hmm. some days but i never have it when the pileated's there i've seen it countless times there that's awesome so cooper oh, I, go ahead. so before we get into your photos which we're going to do in a second i just want to see like so people know what gear you're shooting with what what setup do you have uh so i have the original canon 70 uh since I got to buy my own gear yeah. and I was yeah. too eager to uh, get a bit, a better body. I bought the Canon 70 and then in November I bought the original uh, 100 to 400. So two older, uh, the older gear. Uh, I, when I bought it, I also didn't know anything about the difference difference. I just thought price was the only difference. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't pay attention, but I still love the lens. Uh, I yeah, still love it. Looks the, good. The it works awesome. Yeah. All right, should we look at some of your photos? Sure. Awesome. Yeah, Cooper picked out some shots. We're going to look through them today. Sounds good. Uh, you got them to Alex? Yeah, Alex. Can put them up. All right, guys. So this is a uh, yes. ruby-throated, or is this, what kind of hummingbird? Yeah, it's a female ruby-throat. All right, ruby-throated hummingbird, fan tail. Uh, the tail is fanned. The wings are out. Really nice light on it and a nice green background. Amazing shot. Thank you. So, so why don't you tell us like the story behind this? Like, what happened? Oh. I, there's not that much of a story to this one, honestly. Uh, mm-hmm. I was just I pulled out my five gallon bucket, sat down. Uh, there's, 
I'm not quite sure what the plants were. There's these, uh, they're just some red flowers and they mm-hmm. love them. So, uh, nice. I just sit my, sit my bucket, uh, set my bucket down, sit down and just wait for them to come. Uh, I think this is the only shot that was that I, I really like this shot because it's focused on the head and yeah. you can see it. it's a little clear in the front wing. It's a little, it's kind of sharp on the front wing and the little back wing just kind of drops off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, the tail's fanned, which I like, I like that about this. I like being able to see his little feet. Uh, yeah. Kind of <laughs> yeah. I mean, I that's the part. yeah, what stands out. So I like the shot. Um, how you got one of the wings in focus and then one of them's kind of blurred a little bit with the motion. And then the background super good. Was this at your house or? Yeah, this is just my backyard. Awesome. Yeah. That's dope. So, uh, how long do you think it took you to get this shot? How long were you waiting? 10 minutes. Not very Ten long. Not, oh, that's wow. awesome. Yeah. An average of three or four hummingbirds and they'll sit there and fight all, all day. So yeah, oh, I don't, I don't have awesome. to long for them to show yeah. up. I really like the background. It almost looks like camouflage kind of print. You know, you got the brown and like a really dark green in there and it's some light greens and it kind of it molds all nicely together. The brown um, is actually just my fence. Oh, and the green. The green are just some uh some cannas that we have up in the backyard. Nice. Well, it, they hey, do make, it makes background. a nice background. The um, So what's your shutter speed on this one? Ooh. Oh, yeah. Uh just roughly I, ballpark. Yeah. <laughs> I don't go below sixteen hundred for hummingbirds most of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd probably say this one's four thousandth of a second. Oh, no kidding! Oh, it's been bright it's outside. Not, wow. Oh yeah, yeah, oh. it was bright. Well, I'm still shooting. Uh, I think the probably ISO eight hundred. Oh yeah, maybe six four hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks awesome, and, it, and it's really sharp too. Really nice background. Really sharp. It looks great. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so this one is a mallard, rutted eye level, a ton of snow coming down, the nice green hell in the background. This one does have a bit of a story. <laughs> uh, uh, so doesn't snow here very often. We'll get maybe we it didn't this snow with how hard it didn't it came down it didn't really stick to the ground. Uh, yeah, but we don't we didn't get snow. We haven't got snow like this. I've lived in Texas ten years, over ten years. Never seen snow like this in Texas, at least. Uh, we'll, every every few years, we'll get a few flurries, mm-hmm. uh, just enough to kind of see it if it's behind a dark background. But uh, I walked out, of, came out of church to see it just pouring snow. So as soon as I got home, grabbed my camera, went out to my local pond, uh, see what I could get. So I was pleased with this image. I really yeah. like it. I mean, obviously. Eye level is a huge part for waterfowl. Um, we're going to yeah. talk about, hopefully we're going to do an open discussion on waterfowl here in a few episodes. But, okay. um, I mean, the water, I mean, the foreground looks nice. It just kind of fades into the focus of the duck. Uh, the snow coming down. Snow is always awesome. I mean, snow is just the best. This is really recent, right? I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. Two, three. I'm going to say three weeks ago, I think. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Three weeks ago. Yeah. I mean, it's. I really like the colors in it. It's, I mean eye level is that big part you, you always got to get eye yeah. level. i need to do more of that because all i've got near me are like the ocean water uh, yeah. ocean waterfowl that doesn't sound correct but you get what i'm getting at you know yeah, harlequins yeah. and stuff and I, I have trouble getting eye level so this is awesome um the snow is great you had a great eye here great composition and the background i like the layers on the background you got that uh a little bit of brown and your light uh light green and then your dark green and it just takes up into the yeah. dark green this is an awesome shot dude that's great thank you thank you this uh oh never mind you're good. Yeah, all right this is for our <laughs> podcast if you're listening on a podcast we're describing the photo there's a black-bellied whistling ducks that are backlit with some really nice oranges coming in and if you guys don't know what a black-bellied whistling duck is it has a gray head white eye ring a really nice pink bill and then a brown body yeah <laughs> so you got a story behind this one anything special that happened here uh there's a uh... So at my local pond, this is taking the same place the last photo was oh, taken. Really? No kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I wish I would have known before taking this photo to uh, get eye level. I wasn't as eye level. But uh, so I think I woke up. I just woke up early one day, one morning, just went out the door with my camera, uh, went to go see if these guys were there. Because the day the day before was the first time I'd even seen black belly whistling ducks this location. Yeah. Uh, but I went back out hoping to find him again. I found him. 
here with the, the sun had just, it was quite cloudy day. It was pretty cloudy. And the sun had come up over the horizon. The clouds had just opened just mm-hmm. enough for some sunlight to come through. And it made the water, it made the water gold, which made me happy. Uh, yeah. I actually, I didn't have time to change my settings. I just sat down and started shooting mm-hmm. and I was pleased with the results. Yeah. I mean, that color you're talking about, that gold, I mean, the gold is really nice. You have that th- like three main bars of it. Um, it fades off yeah. into a really nice background. What was back there? It's like the same hill, basically, just later. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just the bank, and then it, the grass goes up on a slight hill. Nice. Yeah, and then I really like how they're like the um the water they're sitting on. It's like a line of light water. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like yeah. the color is very, like, very light. And there's two of them, nice composition. The background is awesome, but the colors are the main thing that make this, this make this the best shot that it could be. Thank you know, they're really nice. It, it looks like it's shining through some trees back there. Is that what's going on? uh yeah nice. i'm trying to think of it uh <laughs> yeah i think it there would have been some trees there's a small opening so it, yeah yeah it, it almost looks like i'm just saying it almost right. looks like you can see the trees in the reflection um yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a great shot i haven't seen i haven't seen whistling ducks yet at all i, I don't know if they're supposed to be yeah those here, are so more of a southern species. Ducks I more of a southern species yeah i don't know anything yeah. about yeah. them so i still need we to had those. yeah we had a few come up to Ohio, Northern Ohio, twice, I think, all last year. Ohio? Yeah. Uh, came all the way up to Ohio twice. Missed them both, of course. Yeah, oof. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh. All right, so this next one is a backlick downy woodpecker, but you can still see the, the detail. It's got some really nice uh, gold coming through the trees. And this this one was actually taken uh, during uh, when I went up to Illinois for Christmas uh, last month. This is this is the stuff that I was talking about the backlit where you can still get the detail. Uh, yeah, these are among my favorite types of images. You were um, this was right like right outside your house, right? This is the one you were shooting. Uh, this was outside my aunt's house. Aunt's house, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So I really like the bouquet in the background. Is it bokeh or bouquet? What do you guys say? Because I've heard I say bouquet. I know some people say bokeh. I say bouquet. I say, I say bokeh. Bokeh. <laughs> that's fine. But anyway, I may be wrong. That's what I heard in a YouTube video. So. Yeah. We're probably all wrong. With. It's probably some like Bo Shaw or some weird stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So the bouquet in the background is really nice. I like how the um, the light outlines the bird. Um, yeah. The foreground, you got some like dark in the foreground. Like it fades into the dark on the left and on the right. Um, you got the bird in focus. Um, yeah. I mean, the ba- I like how it fades into the dark on the right. You had a tree like really close to you there. Is that what's going on? Uh, so yeah. Uh... Those are some pine trees in the background, which kind of uh, kind of let the light filter through. Yeah. Uh, there are some bushes. There are some bushes at the bottom of it. Some mm-hmm. little shrubs. So that, uh, that because with the sun coming in through the back, it uh, made shadows, which kind of darkened it. And the same yeah. with the tree yeah. on the uh, left side, left half, uh, with it being just in the shadows, gave it some dark, uh, kind of just a black foreground, black background, which I kinda, yeah, it which looks I awesome. Quite, and you know, I can actually see on the name of this file, point to with my cursor right here, denoise AI. Uh, I can tell you use denoise on this one. Okay. And so... wait, no, wait, wait. And it, <laughs> if, if you guys are at home, what that does, it gets rid of a lot of the noise. I highly recommend it. Uh, it makes it can just take your photos, especially like up here in Ohio, we get a ton of cloudy days and really high ISOs. So if you get if you it just it takes your photos to another level, gets rid of that grain. We're not sponsored, but it is but, very yeah. this is awesome. <laughs> I I should have it. <laughs> Definitely. Yes, we sure. will. I um I I, I, I don't have it. So my solution is I just go down to like 30th of a second <laughs> and I just take a hundred <laughs> shots because I don't have that. that oh man, I I, I use Denoise AI on almost all my photo almost all my photos and it just does wonders. Awesome. Hey, every single file you see, it's going to say denoise. I use it on literally every – I'll be shooting at ISO 100. I'll still denoise it. I don't know nice. why. All right. Yeah. Well, that's a little far. I don't do that. But, <laughs> but I would say – I would say especially, money, on the run, especially on the past round that you have to use fast shutter speed for, cloudy day, I can shoot 800th, have an ISO 8000, and be fine. I mean, I should be using it since I'm working with owls all the time, but I just haven't. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I never go higher than ISO 1000. Really? I'll drop my sharpie as low as I can to keep below it. I got you. Yeah, same. I'll do the uh, same thing. The older, the older camera body just can't really hire that. Yeah, handle that higher ISO. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, this shot's awesome, dude. This is a female, right? Or am I just wrong? Yes, yeah, female. No, female. Female, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Nice. All right, so this next one, if you guys don't know what a nutria is, um, imagine a large rat. I don't really know how else to describe it. Kind of like a beaver. Looks like a muskrat. Looks a lot yeah, like a muskrat. Large, but a large muskrat. I've actually never seen a muskrat. muskrat. Really? Really? I got them up here. No. but Yeah, I've, I've seen now, I think, I've seen two. Three, actually. Three muskrats. I've seen, like, 80. <laughs> we get a lot I've of them. Nutrias, they're, uh, since they're an, they're an invasive species, so they're kind of taken over. Mm-hmm. So uh, I've seen quite a few. They just look like a beaver without the beaver tail, just a rat tail. They're that big? Uh, yeah. Yeah, just How as big. big are they? Like, uh, <laughs> like, with your hands. Uh, this, like... one, this one's probably hey, this big. Seriously? This wow. Big. I... So I, I, I was walking. You can tell I was in a park, right? And so uh, there were some, uh, some pintails and some coots that I was shooting. I love those. That's uh, cool. Yeah, uh, I <laughs> I quite enjoyed uh, shooting those. Which mm-hmm. most people are just like, "Ew, coots! Why would you shoot those?" At least a bunch of people that I've talked to. But uh, I thought they were cool. So yeah, I was going to shoot them, and uh, I saw this guy like eating, just eating on the ground. So I just immediately dropped to the ground, got eye level, started shooting it, and uh, it actually took off running at me. Scared the crap out of me. That's oh, terrible. Like, oh, no. uh, it got it, it, um, five, six feet from my face. I just kind of laid there, like, please don't come any closer. And then <laughs> jumped in the water and took off. Yeah. So if cool. you guys are um, listening on a podcast, and in this photo, he is the nutria is pretty large in the frame. Behind is it a car and yes. some nice orange in the background. And he got eye level with it in grass. So it makes really pleasing foreground. Yeah. Now, I don't know. I have heard that they have started like doing a nutria control and shooting them and selling their meat. Have you heard anything about that? You know, thinking of them as a giant rat wanting to eat it sounds terrible. That but, sounds uh, awful. Yeah, I would never <laughs> want to eat that. Uh, especially after seeing them in the wild, I would never want to eat one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Beavers, coyotes, at least here in Texas, hogs, coyotes, beavers, you can shoot whenever. You see yeah. them just yeah, take it down. Is that yeah. like, uh, do you have a thing. beaver problem in Texas for like populations or? You know, I don't, I, I know we used to, I haven't seen a beaver in a long time. Yeah. Uh, but I know people, they ruin properties. So they tend to be shot and killed. So wait. This... Where's the new, well, uh, so yeah, new trails, is that we call them? I, I just heard about these when you sent that in the chat like a week oh. ago. Um, What do they mainly compete with? Uh, I think ah, I'm not sure. I know they'll they'll kill they'll kill baby birds. They will like take uh, they'll eat ducks. So I seriously, I've, I've yeah. seen video. I haven't seen it in person, but I've seen them eat go- uh, ducklings, goslings. Uh, well, that's nasty. Uh, I like what that. I that's have heard, there's... I I don't know a ton about them, but what I have heard is that they do a lot of habitat destruction. Yeah, they do. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, nice shot though. <laughs> Is it? All right. Like this, this next one's a silhouette. Is that a ruby crown kinglet? Yeah. Female nice ruby crown kinglet. And it's on the side of a uh, tree with just fiery orange background. It's that the special background. tree. It's a special tree? Yes, yeah, the special nice. tree. Nice. A special tree. Right as the sun's uh, going right at the horizon. I was actually laying on the ground on my stomach for this one. It really? Really, it was really low. Yeah, I was all the way on the ground. Nice. Uh, sun was low. Tried to get that or that fiery orange uh, background. So yeah. So the uh, backgrounds. Was... Oops, sorry. You can go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, okay, awesome. The background, the thing that stands out of it, literally just looks like fire. It looks like it's in like a yeah. forest fire. I mean, it's crazy. What did you have in the background? Just pines there? Or... Uh, there we don't ha- we don't have pine trees where I am. So really? uh, yeah, there's no pine Oof. trees. We Dang. we have mesquite trees, and if you've heard about them, they have needles about that long. Mm-hmm. terrible i hate them uh yeah yeah they're good for like smoking meat though but uh but uh yeah I th- there's a mesquite tree in the background that's it and it's off in the distance nice well it really makes a, for a super good background um the pose of the bird is awesome and i, I like it would just have like the last fifth of it it's just black it looks like it's like a torn paper piece of paper and just the birds yeah. just sitting on it you know yeah I mean, there's a lot of ways to like look at this photo, but it's just it looks awesome. I I chose this one. I have like a set of like 100 photos because uh I like how you can see a little crease in its beak, 
you can kind of see it was it's had I was slightly about to say. Peak. I can I'm try there. to zoom in on that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Now, now it doesn't right. look very silhouette-y. <laughs> when you zoom oh, up like oh, that. Man, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm messing this up, guys. That's all right. It still looks awesome. Okay, okay. Okay. The, um... I can see a little bit of an eye ring there, actually. Yeah, and a couple uh, couple wing bars right there. Oh, it was oh, facing yeah. away from you. I thought it was facing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Now I... Wait, I, zoom in yeah, on that a little bit. That. Zoom in on that a little bit. Yeah, yeah you can you see those wing bars. You can see right here. That's the tail. Yeah, I did not notice its position. And you did use denoise on this one, too. I did, I use the noise on all of them. Everything. Should I get I, it? I, Is I, it worth it? I did. Oh, it's 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 as long thing. as you get it on sale. Fine. Just wait for it to be on sale. It's on sale pretty often. It's I spent. Nice. Yeah, I think I spent fifty dollars on on it. Yeah, yeah me nice. too. Uh, um, this one, I love how you can see the feet and uh, yeah, just fiery orange. Yeah, the, the background fire. is amazing. Yeah, I would just like you... to mention to all the people listening on a podcast: if you go onto our Instagram, YWPPC. And this will be on episode two of the label of this. And you can slide through and see all the photos. Yeah. The, um, yeah, the background, were you trying to get this background? Is that like what, or did you just kind of get it? You're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I took about 20, 25 photos, just trying to, uh, test the background till the bird came. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was just sitting there laying there, just trying to figure out what background would work best. Uh, this one was one of my favorites. And I think nice. I shot it at ISO like, 125 or something like that and still denoised it for some reason was uh, this morning yeah. or afternoon oh it was evening yeah evening all right awesome well you know there is actually a difference if it's ios if it's iso 125 but a really dark image you still could need um yeah denoising yeah i got you all right were those all the shots yeah that was all of them that was awesome all right nice shot. well thank you for coming on man yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. That was awesome. Um, all right. So I think I we're going to have the Instagram in the beginning, but go check out his Instagram again. Uh, Cooper Daniels, thank you so much for coming on. Your shots are awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah. All right. Alex, and that about, yeah, that about wraps it up here for today on YWPPC, the Young Wildlife Photographer's Photo Chat with your host, me, Alex, and Martin. Cue the music.